when you feel yourself and you walk down the street and you are who you are and the sky and everything is open, I felt a ceiling and I felt it was six inches above my head. The door is closed, the walls closed, everything closed and I, it was it, I was done. I ignored it for a while. I pretended like it wasn't happening because I had to. I went to all my appointments, did everything I was supposed to do. But then one day I just woke up and I was in like an extreme panic and the panic didn't leave for months. I mean, I couldn't read a book, which I love to do. I couldn't listen to music, which I love to do. I couldn't do anything because I couldn't focus. And all that played in my head was, you're, you're not gonna make it this time. That, it was like an acute fear. Going up. I often worry most about the patients that come in and say, let's do this, I'm ready. Cancer, you got, I got this, like no problem. I think that's a great attitude to have, but it's a hard attitude to sustain. It's okay to just completely lose it, just lose it. You don't have to keep it together for your doctor. And if you feel like you got to keep it together, then maybe you should find a new doctor because sometimes you just got to let it all hang out. Whatever that is, just let it go. And then we can start to pick up the pieces and figure out what are the problems? What are the physical problems? What are the emotional problems? How do they fit together to make you feel better? All right. So you can't control that you have cancer. So I can live in fear. I can let it consume me and I can let cancer take my identity and let that consume me too, or I can grab a hold of what I can and make my days better days. Dr. Coleman's great because every single appointment I go to, the first thing is, how are you? Not, how are you feeling, not the cancer, how are you? How are you holding up? You know, what have you been doing with yourself? And every appointment, she learns more and more about me. Like she knows about my past, she knows what my fears are right now, she knows what my hopes are for my future. She helps me because there's so much more going on to this than the cancer. I think what patients need to know is we've really heard it all. We know to the core how a cancer diagnosis really can rack a person and a family. And so we're really used to the gamut of emotions, we expect them. She could see that I was kind of like unraveling a little bit because I'd always try to come in with a smile on and um, she could see it. And so she's like, Terry, you have to stop waiting to take care of yourself. See a therapist or a psychiatrist, whatever it is. She really made me understand the importance of it because that you can't do it alone. Just to expel it, to express it, to say, to say I'm sick and I'm scared and I don't know what I'm gonna do and I don't know how I'm gonna get through it, and I'm not gonna get through it, so how long do I have? I'm 37 years old, and I haven't even begun to realize any of my dreams at all. I think there was a good four or five sessions where I went into therapy, and I said the same thing over and over again. I'm scared, I have things that I need to do, I wanna do it in this lifetime, not in my next, I want it all now. A good four or five sessions of that until I could finally expel enough of that, I was able to start coming down. Um, I was able to focus more. In the morning when I wake up, I don't rush my routine anymore. I'm like enjoying that cup of coffee. You know, I'm taking my time, I enjoy it. I, I take moments to myself, taking time to read. I can concentrate on a book again, those things. Listening to music, I, I love that. Meditation's actually become very important to me. Um, I put my headphones in my phone and I lay down and I just try to keep my thoughts on one thing. They say not to um, judge your thoughts. So then they say try to go with the thought if it's something that makes you feel good. So I try to go with that. I have such a big family and I didn't realize how big they are until I got sick. And you don't realize how loved you are, you know, until you really need them and you know all of these things from big from small to big th these things have been amazing i trust dr Coleman so much that medically on her end we're doing everything we can so i don't have to go home and think am i getting the best this am i getting this should i be doing this instead i can go home 
And because of that, I don't have to think about cancer all of the time. I can leave the weight of cancer in her office and I can plan my future. Whatever it's gonna be, it can be mine and not cancer's. All we have is any given moment. Maybe we're delusional and sometimes worrying about tomorrow, but the truth is we really just have the moment that we're in. And I think one of the things that a cancer diagnosis, particularly a metastatic cancer diagnosis, gives patients and that we as doctors and, and just citizens of the world can appreciate is that it's an acute sense of the moment, that I am alive today in this moment. And we just need to get from one moment to the next and that together we can then think about the future. Take it minute by minute, um, hour by hour, day by day. Just put that one foot in front of the other. I can be honest, I still struggle with that. There are some days I wake up and I don't feel it, but cancer is consuming and it will consume you if you let it. I refuse to let it consume me and I, I, I'm going to beat it in how I live. And that's it. I, I'm, I'm going to beat it no matter what.